All right, back to the NBA. Play in matchup between the Lakers and the Pelicans. Winner gets the seventh seed. Eight seed gets, or the loser gets another shot. But down the stretch is where this game was determined. Minute 33 to go was tied at 99 to Austin Reeves, set up Anthony Davis on the alley oop, and then Reeves, D'Angelo Russell in the corner. That was your ball game. Lakers win it 110 106. They are your seventh seed, and they would take on the defending champion, Denver Nuggets, in the first round. Uh, our Dave McMenamin watched it all down there in New Orleans. Big win for LA. But, Dave, I don't know if any team goes around, you know, like, woohoo, we're number seven. Uh, but give me the mood the, at the Smoothie Center in the locker room after the victory. Well, LeBron James addressed his teammates in that locker room and said, hey, man, it's not many times I'm going to shoot six for 20 from the field. We wouldn't have won this game without all of your contributions. So it was the type of win where they, every, every player on the Lakers roster walks out of the arena tonight feeling good about their contributions. And now they turn their attention to Denver. Obviously, the Nuggets have been on this team's mind since last May when they got swept out of the Western Conference Finals. And the Lakers haven't beat them since. They lost every game in the regular season matchup to this team. But I was talking to Anthony Davis about it. And obviously, there was a lot of talk going into tonight whether the Lakers should try to tank this game to avoid the Nuggets in the first round. He said he learned a message from Monty Williams early on in his career which was if you mess with the game, it's going to turn around and mess with you. So Anthony Davis never had the mentality that the Lakers should try to avoid Denver by not playing their best tonight. Mm -hmm. They get that win. They're going to get a couple of days of rest. Anthony Davis says he's positive he will be 100% with his back come Saturday. And LeBron said if the Nuggets play their perfect game and we play our perfect game, it's just going to come down to a couple possessions. Let's see who can execute better when it comes down to that. Yeah, there's, but they're going to have to do it four times in seven of those games. So we would expect the Lakers and their players to say all the right things, even after getting dusted eight straight times. You've been around them enough to, like, how much of this do I believe in what they're saying? Because you, you, you know them and body language and all the rest that comes with it. Yeah, I mean, I think the question is, is it unreasonable to expect LeBron at 39 years old and year 21 to be able to make plays down the stretch against the guy who's probably going to win MVP for the third time this year, who's smack in the middle of his prime in Nikola Jokic. And like LeBron's been superhuman. We've seen it. But even tonight, we saw some slippage late in the game. And Austin Reeves stepped up and made some plays. D'Angelo Russell stepped up, made a big three. Can those guys make those same type of plays against the defending champs when LeBron can't carry it all because that's a juggernaut of a Nuggets team. That's going to what, what it's going to come down to. Thus far, we saw the role players last year for Denver, the Aaron Gordons, the Contavious Caldwell Popes, mm -hmm. uh, a, a superstar role player and Jamal Murray make all the plays that the Lakers didn't. We'll see if a year of seasoning will put the Lakers in a better position to make it a competitive series. The question now becomes, I thought I was asking the questions, but I get it. We know what the roles are here. It's fantastic. <laughs> uh, thank you, Dave McBenham, and uh, we'll pick up with your, uh, your work in Denver. Thanks, John Anderson. All right, so let's go back and relive the season that was between the Lakers and the Nuggets. October 24th, last fall, Nuggets raised that banner as the defending champions. You get the rings, Nikola Jokic. Uh, he would give the Lakers some problems, right? 29 points. 13 rebounds, 11 assists. Nuggets would start off their title defense with a 12-point win over L.A. At the time, John, they're yeah. six straight. So feeling pretty good anytime the purple and gold lines up against them at the other end. Yeah, this is one of those things. It's like, hey, lock them up tomorrow. We'll play them again. February 8th night, the Lakers would unveil the Kobe Bryant statue at their home arena. The Nuggets would steal the show again. Jokic, as he usually does, 24 points, 14 rebounds. He didn't even go cuckoo. For Coco Burton, he just to. played like he did. Jamal Murray lead the way, 29 points, 11 assists for Denver. And the Nuggets take the second matchup of the season, 114-106. All right, so March 2nd, though, LeBron was nine points shy of 40,000 for his career. Milestone, and he was going to do it against the Nuggets. James against Porter, drive, spins, gets inside. It's good. It's 40,000 for LeBron James as the legend of LeBron continues to grow. And so the Lakers start like, well, LeBron's like, we're going to win. And Nuggets like, no, he ain't neither. <laughs> Never. 35 points, 10 boards, 7 assists from the Joker. 
and the Nuggets complete the season sweep of the Lakers 124 114 so three games three wins for Denver but here's the deal if you take a look at the rosters okay they both rank top five in the NBA in winning percentage since February 1st and putting together some of the best offense in the entire league. Believe it or not, the Lakers actually had a better offensive efficiency and field goal percentage during that stretch than the defending champions.